Uh, my first mistake is I didn't start young enough. I started at 31. Now here's the problem with starting at 31 is the first thing you do is not likely to succeed, but the second thing is also not likely to succeed. I mean, the reality is most startups do not work. And so there's a certain cadence to getting a startup off the ground and learning how to market and how to sell and how to build products and how to hire and how to price and how to raise money. And you know, the, the younger you are in learning the skills, the better off you are. And I put a bunch of, oh, sorry, stay there, it's okay. I put a bunch of people up here. I don't know if you know any of these. I guess you know the guy in the bottom right. Who knows the guy in the bottom middle? Dennis Crowley, founder of Foursquare. Charlie Cleaver, the guy in the middle, was the original CTO at Facebook. He's now founded a company called Quora, Q-U-O-R-A. If you don't know it, you should check it out. You can learn just about anything you want to learn on Quora. But all of these guys started their companies in their 20s. And Charlie uh, uh, has started two companies in his 20s. And I will tell you this is, in, to some extent, you guys are already too old. And I know that sounds not possible, but I promise you what I'm about to say is true. In the last six weeks, six weeks, I have been pitched by five entrepreneurs under 20. Five under 20. The youngest was 15. And this guy like, will not stop Facebook stalking me. And, uh, <laughs> And the truth is, he's pretty talented. I'm pretty surprised with what he's built. His parents are letting him drop out of high school, take the GED. He's got four co-founders, so there's five of them in total. And uh, has, uh, you probably you haven't heard of this company, but has anyone heard of a company called TaskRabbit? Okay, this is a pretty clever startup. Now, he's uh, created a competitor to TaskRabbit. TaskRabbit has raised a bunch of venture capital. He thinks he has a better way to do it. Two of his co-founders, are MIT dropouts. Both of them are under 15. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, in my office recently, a guy from, uh, two guys from Boulder came. Uh, one guy was old, 27, and his co-founder was 17. And he was pitching to my partners. Now, I'm a bit younger than my partners, so um, one of my partners has a, a son who's starting at NYU this year. And, uh, and this guy came in at 17, started saying, well, the first company I built did A, B, and C, and we learned how to do media buying and how to orbit and how to sell it on the back end. And I took the 200,000 that I made from that business to start this business. And so he's going through all this thing, and he hadn't told my partner his age yet. I knew uh, I was keeping a secret because I had met them when I was in Boulder. And, uh, and he's going through all this and how they now have a company that's on a run rate of about half a million dollars a year. And what they do is lead gen for chiropractic offices using technology. Uh, they might be a good client. Oh, I did introduce them to Ring Revenue. Um, and might be you know, uh, a good client for us. And, and uh, so he comes in and gives this whole presentation. And my partner finally has to ask him. I, probably you're not allowed to, but he did anyway. And how old are you? And he got 17. And, and he's thinking, Shh, my kid is 19. He's already failed. Um, <laughs> but really, uh, I, the main thing I wanted to say, not that you're a failure, but that you need to believe that at any age you really can do this stuff and you're going to make lots of mistakes and you don't have all the answers, but there's no time like the present to learn. So, you know, I asked, you know, but why now, you know, couldn't I do this later? Couldn't I, you know, learn real skills first or, you know, why me? Am I really talented enough to do it? Well, I want to convince you that there is unprecedented opportunity in 2011 that you have never seen a decade ago to the day, September 29th, 2001, coincidentally, I was in Santa Barbara. I was living in London at the time. I was in Santa Barbara, and I was on my first startup. There were 100 million people online, on dial-up, connected for less than an hour a day, either at work or you know that little AOL dial-up thing you've got mail late at night. And there was no distribution, so if you built a startup, if you built a startup when I was growing up, you had to put something on shrink wrap software and convince Egghead software to sell it for you, or you had to put it in the classified ads. When I did my first startup, which I started in 99, uh, the only way to get mass consumer distribution was to pay a huge amount of money to AOL. 
Um, and so really the opportunity in 2001 when we had the first dot-com explosion was almost non-existent. And yet today there's 2 billion people online. And they're online, as you probably are, all of the time. Finding a respectful way, a professional way to part from your business if it's not right for you for the long haul is important for this reason. You only have your youth once. It is order of magnitude easier to do a business. Look, I'm not ageist. Uh, the very first venture capital money I ever invested was to a Santa Barbara company called Ring Revenue. And I don't know at the time, Jason, are you here? No, not here. He thought I've heard, heard all his shit before. Um, <laughs> no, but at the time, I'm guessing he was 40, 41, 39, somewhere in that age. What? 42 when he got his first money. So, so I would have guessed 41, okay? But so like, I'm not ageist at all. You can do it. I'm just telling you, it's order of magnitude harder when you have kids and a mortgage and a wife or husband and expectations and college savings to think about and all that other baggage. Now, I had it in my first company, so it can be done, but the one thing I would do differently if I had a do-over, a mulligan, I would have started much younger, and if you start at 22 or 24 or 26 or 28, and you're four years in, and it's just not everything you wanted to do in life, it's okay, because now you can do your second one. If you stay for 12 years, well, do the math, then you're 34, and about to start your second one, and you're also starting a family and all that other stuff. So it's okay to not stay. So really quickly, takeaways, start. It's the only way that you will know. 98% of people who tell me they want to do startups are not entrepreneurs. They're entrepreneurs Because they want to do it, but they don't. The difference between a entrepreneur and an entrepreneur is an entrepreneur starts. And you may not be a good entrepreneur. And you may not make a lot of money and a lot of fame, but there is only one way to know. So find a concept that you're passionate about. Start lean. Don't raise too much money. Uh, try your best not to take too much from family and friends. It makes for really awkward Thanksgiving dinners. And um, take risks, be bold, make a difference, don't be cautious. I, I always saw startup life as a game. And what I mean is, literally, I saw it as a game. I mean, people would be yelling at me and threatening me and lawsuits or bankruptcy and all this stuff. And at the darkest moment when I thought my first company was going to go bankrupt and I gathered all my team, and we went to the pub. And I said to him, it was like 11 in the morning, and I said to him, <laughs> um, this is an absolute true story, uh, we thought we were done, and we thought we had two weeks uh, until we were out of cash, and our, we had a merger, and we were going to merge with another company, and people were going to invest money in this merger, and that company pulled out and said, we're just going to fund ourselves. We don't want to merge with you. So we had no option. So we all sat around the table, and I just kind of jokingly said, well, at least we're going to have an experience in how to do a bankruptcy, right? Like, you almost have to abstract yourself from the stress of it all and see it as a game and have fun with it. Um, flip burgers, do everything yourself, don't be a hoe, <laughs> and focus on your customers because nothing else matters. So thank you very much. I appreciate it.